corner that shows I'm recording the interview. So today is September 10th in the year 2020, and I'm sitting here today with um, Will Stutheit and Lynn Stutheit. Is that, did I pronounce that correctly? Right. Okay. Uh, and they are in Fort Collins, Colorado, and I am Rachel Beyer, and I am in Westminster, Colorado, uh, speaking with them today. So thank you for being here with us today. So let's get started. You grew up in the neighborhood of- uh, Rachel, we lost you for a little bit. So um, we lost you since you pronounced our name. Okay, so I think that the recording, I think will be okay. Um, I was still picking up on you. It looks like we just have a little bit of a, um, a slow internet today. Yeah. So um, maybe the weather. <laughs> Could be, yeah. So, so Will, why don't you start off by telling me about Barnum? What, what do you know? You grew up in the neighborhood. Uh, what do you know about the history of the neighborhood of Barnum? Are you asking me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, uh, I lived in Barnum all of my childhood, and I was born there in 1927. And um, I knew the, the background of P.T. Barnum having bought some land there for his circus. And um, there have been stories told that he once lived there, but he never lived in Barnum. Uh, he, his circus uh, would come to town on, uh, on, by train in the, into the Denver Depot and uh, then they would uh, they would move the the animals and everything. They just walk out to the area where he had bought the land for his circus. Oh, hold on, hold on a second, Will. I've lost your sound. You've lost the sound? I lost sound there for a second. The last thing I heard was that he walked them out there. Oh, he walked uh, his, all of his animals to the location for the circus. Okay, and then uh, after the circus was over, the area adjacent to where he had bought the land became a small commercial area, which was again on First and Knox Court. And there was a grocery store, a, a theater, a library, a hardware store, a grocery store, all in, in that, on that same corner, basically. And so it became kind of a small commercial area at the time. And then, uh, let me see what else. And just my other recollections, I lived on 4th, 452 King Street, which was approximately five blocks away from that location. And between uh, when I was growing up, there was another gross, small grocery store and drug store uh, on Knox Court between 5th and 6th. Avenue. And that was typical of the time to just have small businesses, not just mm -hmm. supermarkets. We never even knew what a supermarket was. But um, the things that I remember a lot is that um, the uh, when we first moved, my folks moved in there and I was a young child, uh, the streets were unpaved. They were gravel streets and the um, the city would occasionally come by with water wagons, horse-drawn water wagons, and sprinkle them down so it wasn't so dusty. And, but on the other, and you may, this, this has been said before, Barn, there was a slogan at Barnum that if you stick to Barnum, and Barnum will stick to you. This, uh, and, uh, I've always remembered that. I don't remember it being that quite that muddy, but anyway, it, it evidently was at one time. Um, 
Barnum was a community of, 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 of working people. And this was a time, I was born 27 now, so the depression, you know, hadn't, hadn't left yet really. And uh, so it was, and when you're a young child, you don't, you don't even realize what's happening on that level. But I always felt that, that it was, I, I thought it was a middle, middle class community and that um, for the most part, uh, everybody I knew in the neighborhood was had a job and they were working and were very, taking very good care of their houses and that sort of thing. So uh, that was the impression that I still have of, of Barnum at the time. And uh, I didn't leave there until basically until about 1948. No, no, maybe, you know, earlier than that, probably 46 when I went into the service. So, uh, what else would you like to? What you said most of the men were employed. What kind of jobs did the folks in Barnum do? I think they were in, in one of them worked, one of them worked for the railroad. Uh, another uh, fellow had a had a business of his own, and he was probably the most wealthy in the neighborhood. He he, he was a, a, con, a constructing, and he built houses. And he, um, the, his son, one of he had three sons and two daughters. But anyway, one of his sons was one of my close friends, and uh, the uh, a railroad conductor, and then just. Uh, jobs in, in Denver, and I don't know specifically, I didn't pay much attention to it. I wasn't into that kind of stuff at that time. So, uh, but but they, I would say middle-class kind of jobs. And uh, the, uh, one of the things I've always thought about as growing up in Barnum, and this was true of Denver, the primary means of location were streetcars. And so if you wanted to go to Denver, you had to get on a streetcar. And are you hearing me? Hello? Yes, I can, I can hear you. The screen's frozen, but I can hear you. Can you hear me? Uh-oh, we've lost sound again. Our, there we go. Okay, okay. there we go. It's, it's telling us our internet isn't good today for some reason. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure what's going on. I I was able to hear you uh, though. Okay. Oh, you you heard so you me? heard the streetcars. I heard the streetcar part. Yep. Okay, but anyway, I want to continue on that because uh, this is not necessarily specific to Barnum. But the way you got around Denver was by streetcar, and all the streetcars uh, went into Denver at about Larimer or Lawrence Street and 14th, and there was a loop. And so, if you wanted to go from one place in Denver to the other, you went to the loop and transferred streetcars. And uh, so, uh, I I just thought that was a great way to get around town and. Uh, you could do go a lot of places on the streetcar at that time. Of course, there wasn't that far to go either. So, uh, but uh, that's one of the, one of my recollections. And then, um, when when we were growing up in Barnum, there was a place called Barnum Park, and it was on Julian between Fourth and Fifth Avenues. And we didn't have a swimming pool, but they had a wading pool. And for, for kids, that was kind of fun. And uh, the, uh, well, the other thing I want to, uh, I, I should tell you is that we always thought of Barnum as being upper Barnum and lower Barnum. 
and Laura Barnum uh, stretched from about, well, some people say Alameda on the south to about Third Avenue on the north. Oh, hold hold on a second. I, I lost you again there. Um, I heard I heard Alameda on the north was the last thing I heard. Where was we? Upper Upper Barnum, Dad. Upper was... Barnum and and Lower Barnum. Oh, and and well, did you get my geographical definition of them? I heard I heard I uh, I heard north of Alameda. What? Oh, okay. Well. Uh, North of Alameda to about Third Avenue was Lower Barnum, and then Upper Barnum ran from Fourth Avenue to Tenth or Twelfth Avenue, and uh, I—that's just my definition. I don't know if anybody else thought of it that way or not. But okay, if you lived in Lower Barnum, you went to Barnum Elementary School, and if you lived in Upper Barnum where I did, you went to Eagleton Elementary School, which was an elementary school, by the way, that my mother went to. And uh, I thought that was, and she, and she and I both went to the same high school. We graduated from West High School. My father was born in Louisville, Colorado, and I don't know a great deal about his education, but I know he never graduated from high school. And, uh, when, uh, when I was very young, I know they, uh, the depression had hit and my dad was having a very hard time finding a job. And he, uh, he finally got a job with the Colorado Ice and Cold Storage. And uh, cause a lot of people had ice boxes back then. And uh, so they would deliver ice by horse and buggy to people. And uh, after that, he, re he attained a job with the post office and he became a letter carrier and that was his occupation for the rest of his life. Um, and personally, uh, we lived in, I have two sisters. I had two sisters, one who recently died, but um, we lived in a uh, two bedroom house. Are you with me? Are you still there? I think she can hear you. Yes, I'm still here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. But we had a two bedroom house and uh, my two sisters and I shared a bedroom. And um, as I recall, they had a, t uh, a double bed and I had a single bed. And uh, we had one bathroom in the house growing up. Um, we took baths on Saturday. That, that was, and this is, I, I tell other people this, and that when we took baths on Saturday, my sisters took, bath, took their bath first, and then I took my bath in the same bath water that they did, uh, and you may have heard this before. I don't know, but anyway, that's what we did. My father, uh, was was very handy and he could have been a, a, a contractor himself but we the, the house had no basement under in it at the at the time so he by himself with a little help from me dug out the basement totally dug out the basement and 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 put a rec room and a bedroom and uh, no bathroom, but he did that all on his own. And, and, and I've always thought it was just great that he did that. So, um, well, the other thing, um, I'm just kind of rambling now as things come to my mind, but uh, everybody there had uh, clothes. Hold on, I, lo I lost sound again. Let's see. We're live. 
lost. Oh, there it, there it, it's back. Okay. I don't even okay. know where we were. <laughs> close lines. You were talking about close lines, Dad. Oh, about close yes. lines? Mm -hmm. Well, one night, uh, one of my friends uh, stayed overnight with me, and my, and my folks were gone. And I, I think my sisters were asleep, but this friend and I kept hearing, we kept hearing noise outside. And we were about 10 or 12, maybe. And we were quite frankly, kind of scared. We thought somebody was trying to carve their way into our house <laughs> or something. And so we called up uh, this boy's um, father and he came down and looked around. He, he came in laughing and he said, well, I found your intruder and it was my mother's uh, clothespin bag that was sliding up and down the clothesline and making that noise. So uh, we were very relieved and, then, and we're glad nobody was trying to get in and get us. And, uh, but uh, that's an aside. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, Those are always the fun stories though. Those are, those are the fun stories when you can uh, when just to, you know, those are the kind of things that are different that just you have as an experience. Mm -hmm. This is so too bad. We're lost. Yeah. Oh, can you hear me? Oh, gotcha back, yeah. We're all right, back. so I, I, all I was saying was those are the fun kind of stories. I love hearing those kind of stories. Um, I'm a historian and one of my fields is children and youth. Oh. And uh, stories about childhood are always, I, they're my favorites because they're the kind of things that are really hard to find in historical records, um, which was one of the reasons I was excited to talk to you today, not just about Barnum, but about the fact that you had your childhood in Barnum. Yeah. Okay. Any of those kinds of stories you have, I'm, I'm happy to listen to them. Hmm? What you did as a child, she likes those stories. Oh, well, uh, as kids, it, I guess some, a lot of the things we did with kids that they don't do anymore is that the, the kids in the neighborhood gathered together an awful lot in the evenings and we'd play hide and skeek and kick the can. And as a matter of fact, one of the evenings that we were playing uh, hide and seek, uh, one of our uh, neighborhood kids was running home to get home. Hold on a sec. Can can you hear me? Oh, we froze again. Can you hear me? Frustrating. Can you hear me now? I, I think I heard just a glimpse of you. Yeah, we hear you. Why, why don't well, let's let's try something. I'm wondering if maybe the video part is slowing us down. I'm just wondering if maybe if we both um, stop our video, but keep the audio on that we might have better luck hearing, hearing each other. Let's see. Let's, should we try that? You should just be able to hit stop video. Okay. Can you okay. Yeah. yeah, I can, yes, I can actually hear you. I can actually hear you much better. Oh, okay. So he so was saying that we're playing, uh, Oh, oh shoot. Oh boy. For kids back then was a, was really a trick. Oftentimes, we would figure out who was giving the most and the best, and we would go back and, and try to, because they didn't recognize you, of course, you were wearing masks, unless they remembered the masks, but that, that was something that we always did. Um, and then 
I had earlier talked about streetcars and this um, streetcars had a trolley and it, it ran on an overhead line which carried the electricity. And um, as we grew a little older, probably to high school age, it was a great, uh, uh, well, it was fun and I guess I would say you could pull the trolley and the conductor would have to get off and rehook it. But it was kind of a prank that we we enjoyed doing occasionally. Um, well, the other thing growing up in Barnum is that uh, we, if you were a swimmer and you liked to swim, we went to two different lakes. Um, Washington Park had a lake and a swimming pool and a diving tower. And uh, Berkeley had a swimming area, beach. And there were two uh, swimming pools. Lakeside had a swimming pool. And then, uh, I've just lost the name of it, but there was a swimming pool south of Barnum. Oops, I lost you again. Oops, I, I lost you again. Uh, how much did you hear? This is getting frustrating. I, yeah, I, I, I also, I'm wondering, um, would you be willing to, to have me call you by the phone, call you on phone and, and use speaker phone so that we can get better, uh, better sound on this? Um, the only problem is he doesn't hear very well on the phone. Right. Um, yeah, I, I also, I, I, I don't want to lose this interview. Uh, would it be possible for us to reschedule it on a different day? Well, what, what difference would it may make if we did it a different day? Well, I just, I just didn't know if maybe there were problems with the internet going on today because of, of. Well, let's, let's keep going. Tell me where you were, where we were the last time. You were telling me about. Hmm? You were telling me about all the different swimming pools in uh, in the area. Did I tell you uh, about the swimming pools? Yes. Okay, you got that. Okay. Uh, well, one of the other things I wanted to tell you about was every everybody every boy when you became sixteen, you're uh, one of you want to. and tractor and he was kind enough to let uh, myself and some other friends of the uh, of the friend of the uncle come out there and we learned how to drive on that tractor and it was a I thought it was really a great thing to be able to do and, and oh and associated with that and growing up in there was a, a lake on the corner of and it had a, a, a tire higher swing and you could swing way out over the lake and then jump off the tire into the lake and that was uh, it was very close to the Bonfice uh, estate and Helen Bonfice was the owner of the Denver Post at one time but anyway uh, uh, that that whole lake is gone now um, take a break Jeff let's make sure she's with us and we used to go up are you with us Rachel Yes, I am. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. And another thing we did as kids, we all rode bikes. Everywhere we rode bikes. And often, uh, uh, several times, 
we would get on our bikes and ride up to uh, Red Rocks and off the area. Very safe in doing that, and uh, it was a good, nice bike. We a bike ride. We take a little lunch with us, and and ride up there and come back, and then uh, uh, I don't know that. <laughs> those are those are things we just enjoy doing. And uh, what else, Rachel? Um. Yeah. So I. Uh... What is the, the, one of the things I'm curious about is um, the ethnic background of the neighborhood? The, eth the ethnic background of your neighborhood. Oh, the ethnic uh -huh. background, it was primarily Caucasian, uh, pretty, and, and there were quite a few in terms of the, not only the ethnic background, all of my, my friends, uh, I went to West High School, but all of my friends went to St. Joseph. They were, there were quite a few Catholics in the neighborhood, and uh, um, I didn't, it is, that, that's just. Nobody in the neighborhood went to West High School, except me. Oh, uh, which brings me to another little story. So uh, tell about the Italian population before well, we forget that too. There weren't any. There were no. Lynn said, "How about the Italians?" And I said, "There are. There weren't any." Uh -huh. Earlier, I think I told you that from Barnum it went to a Jewish population, and from from that and north of that was the Italians and uh, okay uh, primarily uh, Barnum was as I knew it was was white Caucasian and uh, uh, so the uh, now I've lost my train of thought uh, I forget what I was going to tell you Was it, a, was it about the schools you were talking about? You said you wanted to share a thought and you said it right yeah. after you were talking about the schools. Shoot. When I went to high school, I participated, I was always interested in athletics and I participated in high school basketball and high school football. And um, so I was usually pretty busy uh, with athletics after school. Oh, this ring, uh, by the way, when we were growing up as little kids, their, uh, their, their athletics was through a group called Young American. Uh, and they, they did football and baseball. And I started playing football with the Young American League probably when I was eight or nine years old. And then uh, I tried baseball a little bit and I didn't do too good at baseball. But anyway, we spent time, that's how we, uh, one of the ways I was able to spend my spare time in the non-school days uh, was with the Young American League. And, uh, uh, the co one of our coaches at that time was a high school t a teacher and he, he just volunteered his time to do that. And there were teams scattered throughout Denver. We played uh, teams in North Denver and in Middle Denver and South Denver and it was really fun. I, I, that was really a, a positive factor for me. Um, I should also tell you, Rachel, that my mother always worked 
and uh, uh, she worked for, uh, uh, there was just an article I read recently, but they had an, or, an ordinance factory out on Alameda, uh, uh, West Alameda someplace, and she worked in that, and she also worked a uh, uh, number of places. She graduated from high school with a background in business, so she worked for a, a, a company called Deep Rock Water, which I think is still in business, and then she went to work as a bookkeeper for Denver Wholesale Florist, and she was a, worked in that The, the chores at home, doing the cooking, the laundry, the the housekeeping, and that sort of thing. Um, this also reminds me that my folks had <clears throat> a group of friends that they gathered together uh, almost weekly on Saturday nights, and they played pinochle, which oh. was a... Uh, game of choice back then and uh, I, I can remember as kids when we were in the bedroom and they were at our house that they just were having a great time and uh, uh, it's it, so growing up those are the kind of things you remember I guess so what else yeah that's love that's wonderful um, so you were in high school during World War II is that What what do you re what do you remember about the war? About the war. Uh huh. Second World War. Yes. Well, I, was in, I was in high school, and practically <clears throat> almost all my classmates. The Second World War was a war everybody was involved in, and, and mm -hmm. with no negativity that I can remember at all, and. When you, uh, myself and many of my classmates could hardly wait until we were old enough to to join the service, and uh, I, I when the minute I I graduated in in January of 1945, I was 17 and I had to be 18, and as soon as I was 18, I tried to uh, join the Marines and the Navy, and I couldn't join either one because I was colorblind. Mm. And, uh, but then I joined the Merchant Marine, and I spent, uh, I made two trips uh, in the Merchant Marine. The Merchant Marine was actually a, uh, a labor union at the time. Oh. And I did, I did training for the Merchant Marine on Santa Catalina Island. And after Santa Catalina, then you went to a port to sign up for a ship. And then when I went, I went to Seattle for the first time, I signed up for a ship and you had 10 days that you could say, yes, I'm gonna sail on the ship or not. Well, I, t I, I took that trip and it was on a Liberty, uh, boat, Liberty Ship, which was a very, very slow moving um, um, ship. And we went to, um, uh, I want to say Guadalcanal, but it wasn't Guadalcanal. And anyway, we picked up a load of Marines that had been fighting in the South Pacific. from Seattle, and I went from Seattle down the coast of California and down the, uh, the west coast of South America. We came, uh, we then headed back home through the Panama Canal, and as we were, we had, 
one of the car the hole that was holding the nitrate. So the canal authorities took took charge of the ship. Well, I still, I, I knew I was going to be drafted, so mm -hmm. I, I joined the army and I was, uh, went to Fort Bragg and, and did my basic training. And then we were sent to California. From California, we went to Japan and mm -hmm. uh, I, I spent, uh, Twenty, twenty uh, members, and we were dispatched to Nagasaki, uh -huh. and, and Nagasaki was in ruins because of the bomb. You know, it was a city yeah. that bomb, and uh, it, it was a terrible destruction. And uh, but anyway we were supposed to just take charge of the government of Nagasaki at that time. And I worked, one of my responsibilities, they had a prison there, a Japanese prison. Mm -hmm. And one of my responsibilities supposedly was to overlook the, and work with the warden of that prison. And uh, here you are an 18 year old kid trying to tell somebody what to do. It's, but uh, yeah. anyway. Um, that was my experience, and then I got out of the army, and uh, I had joined the reserve, and so uh, um, in between time. I had gotten married. I was married in 1950. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife and I, when I when I went back into the service, we went to Fort Sheridan, Illinois, and uh, we uh, drove back there. I had a little 36 Plymouth. <laughs> And we were able to get together and find different living and we stayed in Fort Sheridan for it was a business that was owned by Jack Dempsey and she got to meet Jack Dempsey but uh, then uh, after the, after I returned from that leadership training school, um, I was offered the opportunity to, to go on and become an officer. And I said, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we were re I was reassigned to Denver as a military policeman. And so we moved back to Denver and then uh, that's where I ended my military career so mm -hmm. okay that's kind of a long story <laughs> okay that's so when you moved back to denver did you return to the barnum neighborhood or did you live someplace no, else? i never went back to barnum never uh -huh. did go back to barnum after i had gone into the service and uh, so i probably uh, 
Jerry and I were married in 1950, and probably the last time I lived in Barnum was 1948. <laughs> so looking back at that time there, what do you have a favorite memory or a favorite thing that, that, that reminds you of Barnum? Uh, I, I don't think I have a favorite memory. I just have a lot of little memories and the yeah. kind of things we've been talking about today. But uh, there, I have no desire. We haven't been back there for quite a long time. And, and my, my children have said, well, we ought to go by and look at it. Are you there? Oops, I, I lost you. I lost you right at the end, I think. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, you said I, everything Boy, everything has really changed because the, the makeup of Barnum is today primarily is Hispanic, mm -hmm. as, as I understand it. And uh, when I, I think I've gone by the house maybe once or twice. Uh -huh. and, they have changed the exterior of it, and uh, um, basically the 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 area looks the same, but it, it's just different. You can just feel. It, uh, I I've never contacted the people that live in the house or anything, but I do know that from what I've read and see is that it's it's primarily turned to Hispanic. Right. Yeah, I, I think I think it's hard to go back on those kind of things, right? To see something that's changed quite a bit from what your memories are of it. Oh yeah, and uh, so, but my my sisters and I have always had fond memories of growing up there. I'd, I'd have to say that. So, well, based on the stories you've shared with me today, I can see why it sounds like you really enjoyed growing up in Barnum. Yeah, I did. And there were a lot of things for us to do, and everybody was, I, I never felt there was a neighbor that was an ornery son of a gun or anything like that. <laughs> they were always pretty good to all of our kids, all of us kids, so. That's um, wonderful. Well, yeah. is, is, there, is there anything else you'd like to share with me today? I can't think of anything, Rachel. Okay, well, well, Will, thank you so much for uh, spending the time with me today. And Lynn, thank you so much for contacting me and uh, giving me the opportunity to, to hear your story. I'll have to tell you, there's one other thing that's kind of interesting, at least it is to me. Yeah. My maternal grandmother's name, was first name was Rachel. So uh, it gives me a... A little bit of a kinship. <laughs> yeah, it's a good, it's a good name. <laughs> yeah. okay. okay, what's going to well, become all this anyway? So it'll take about a month um, because I have to formally uh, get it through all of our formal paperwork and everything on my end. But then I will end up um, posting it on SoundCloud and putting it in our catalog. And when I do that, I will send you uh, both the email links for that so that you can find where it is and listen to it. Okay. Oh, great. Well, there's one other thing I just came oh, yes. to mind that I wanted to tell you. Um, yes. that lot and turn it into a football field. And we would do that by taking the ashes from our, from our, our furnaces and, and lining it up, lining it off as kind of a small <laughs> football field. And uh, so the, the kids in the neighborhood would get together and play football on that field, not tackle, but a, a touch football. Right. And, um, <laughs> the other thing that was, as you grew up, everybody had a hoop.
kind of athletic and uh, it was fun because we were able to get together and have uh, uh, have games like that together so uh, great solutions <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, Lynn, one other thing I've told them. Um, we lived at, the, where we lived at the time, right below us, a block below us, there was a small dump. And huh. uh, that was... And uh, two of my friends and I are you there, Rachel? Oh, I, I lost you right there at the end at the end of the story about the dump. Yeah. Okay. Well, on, on Saturdays in the summertime, two of my friends and I would take my dad's trailer and we had alleys behind all, all houses. Uh -huh. Interesting, the alleys were paved, as I recall it, but the streets <laughs> weren't. Yeah. I don't know what the, the deal was, but every place had alleys at the time and every place had an ash pit. Uh -huh. because they were coal burning furnaces. Well, on, on the weekends, we go up and down alleys, emptying people's ash pits, probably for a quarter or something like that. Mm -hmm. and then we'd fill the trailer up and, and take it down to the dump and dump it and then continue. But we'd earn enough money on a Saturday to go to a, a, a a drugstore that actually uh, served sandwiches. Ooh. And we thought it was just really great to uh, earn that money and, uh -huh. and expend it on, the, on sandwiches. Well, this brings back another thing. It, back in those days, uh, the theater in Barnum was called the Comet. And mm -hmm. uh, it was a small No, uh, groceries were important. Really, really neat. So um, it's kind of funny how these things come back to your memory. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, Anyway, that's was growing up in Barnum. So that's fantastic. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And like I said, when I get everything done, I will send you the links. Um, I will send you the links by email. That sounds great, Rachel. Thanks for your interest. Yeah, thank you so much, Will. Thank you so much, Lynn. Have a lovely day. Okay. You too. Same Thanks, to you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. bye.